Hey, what's going on? Welcome to another episode of Spill the Beans. Today, I'm sitting down with Audrey Bosherding. I've known her and her husband, Josh, for probably, probably five years now. I've been a member of our mastermind for uh, a little over two years and uh, just amazing, amazing business owners, amazing, amazing people. And what I truly respect about them that we're going to talk about when I sit down with Audrey today is how they have designed their business around their life. She has this really fascinating way of creating a calendar, putting her life in the calendar first, and then finding gaps to work the business inside the schedule of her life and her wants and her desires and her kids and her family and her health and all the other things that are more important than just the money. The money just serves the purpose of allowing her to, to meet those goals, meet those objectives, and live the lifestyle that, that she wants. So. Uh, I have a ton of respect for her. I can't wait to sit down and share her insights and how she's built, what she's built in the way that she's wanted to build it with you guys. So let's go sit down with Audrey. Audrey Bosher, give me a hug. How are you? Good Good to see you. Welcome to Charleston. Thank you. So we are filming this um, after the Puerto Rico summit. Yes. which you came out, spoke in Puerto Rico, mm-hmm. and um, had a message that has been resonating with all the legacy family members um, for many, many weeks. And people have just completely turned their psychology and their outlook on how they're building their business versus how they're building their life. And it, it's turned a lot of things upside down. So I'm excited to dive into all of that. Before we do, mm-hmm. I want to hear a little bit more about your story. Sure. And um, how you became an entrepreneur, and Josh, and how you guys have built a business, and now now how you've really developed the business to fit inside your lifestyle, as opposed to you know fitting your life inside of your business. Sure. Um, so we've been in real estate 15 years, almost 15 years, a lot in the multifamily space. Um, we didn't start out that way though. We didn't grow up that way, and we didn't start out that way on our journey. So we started out kind of the American dream path, right? Like a lot of people go to college, get a good job, Mm -hmm. and then start putting yourself in debt, right? For the house and the cars and all the stuff. Like, let's just keep doing that. Um, But we we had started on that path, and especially for me, I realized quickly that I really never had a job I loved, Mm -hmm. like that I just really wanted to get up and and go do, at least Mm -hmm. not for a very long time, because then I would always go like, okay, we should be doing this differently or this that way, and like. Just it was a it was a different perspective and different experience, and I realized you know this isn't going to work. This isn't sustainable. It's not going to be. It's not going to bring me joy long term. And so, that kind of for me was what got the ball rolling. And then Josh too was realizing like we can't. This isn't going to give us the freedom mm-hmm. that we feel like we want and, and the different life that we really want to see. And he ended up reading Rich Dad Poor Dad, which he's not a reader. Um, so when he read it in like two days, I'm like, okay, I, I need to read this book. Yeah, yeah, so yeah. there's something in this book because yeah. he doesn't do that. That was one of the first that. books I ever read too. I know. I it like, feels so cheesy to share, like, but I'm like, Whoa. yeah, the perspective. Because like, like we I never about. read a book before. So I don't know yeah. if it was the book, <laughs> if it was just because it was a book or because of the concepts in that book specifically. <laughs> Maybe both. <laughs> but I was the same boat, right? Yeah. 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 So he read it and I was like, okay, I got to read this thing. And so I did and kind of. Fast forward the story, we were in a, a new house we had gotten, we had the new cars in the garage, all that stuff, right? And we're like, this isn't actually making us happy. Yeah. yeah, this isn't even what we really wanted. So we knew that we needed to make change, which was gonna take some massive action if we were gonna do this thing right. So mm-hmm. we ended up selling that house. We took 10 grand to close it, because that was right, that was 07. Oh, like, okay. in the 08, like right mm-hmm. when things were changing. So we got rid of that house, paid to get rid of it, bought a fourplex on a short sale before anybody knew what that was, at least in our area. So we were even, we were lucky even to get that thing closed, but we bought that, lived in one of the units. I still remember we were renovating it ourselves. I still remember sitting in that living room and we had torn all the flooring out because it was disgusting. I mean, this you place had kids needed. at that time, right? No, not yet. Not yet. Yeah, this was pre-kids. Um, so we were living in it, renovating it at the same time. I was... At this time as well, I had gone back to school, right? That's a great idea when you don't know what you want to do. Just go get... Yeah, that's, that's what this society tells you to do. Just pay for more education. So yeah, I got a hey. master's. And not to discredit any of that, but I was doing it for the wrong reasons. I yeah. was just searching, you know, really. And so this is all happening at once. Um, but I still remember sitting in that living room and we had the conversation like, wow, if we did this, you know, a time or two every year, if we just bought like one property, imagine how amazing that would be in... 25 or 30 years. Like that was still what we were kind of thinking, even though we had taken massive action. And then 
we started doing it a little more and a little more. And before you know it, in the next couple of years, we had like 75 or 80 units. Mm -hmm. And then we had turned it into like, wait, this is full time. Isn't this isn't a retirement it's, thing. It's not even in our vocabulary, right? And, and it's hard to... It's hard to when you've when you've only done it on a fourplex though. It's hard yeah. to conceptualize four hundred doors, right? Yeah. It's hard to conceptualize four thousand doors. Like, yeah. that's why it's so important. I think for for us to always go back to that origin story and yes. sharing what's possible. Because guess mm -hmm. what? It started with one. It started with a duplex. Yeah. It started with a quadplex. And that way, people, you know what? I can wrap my head around that, mm -hmm. and I can do one of those a year. You know, yes. if you teach me the tools on how to do one of those a year, and then the exciting part is that the the snowball effect, yes. the compound effect sets mm -hmm. in, and you pick your head up after five years, and you're like, oh my gosh, I have seventy doors. Yeah, it's amazing. Yeah, I love that. And that, but in to your point, going back to your roots, that helps me a lot with students because you have to get that perspective again. Yeah. You have to go back to understand why sometimes it's hard for them to push through and take that massive action or get started or dream the big dream. Like, especially mm -hmm. when I work with people on vision and you really have to work them through what they actually want and envision because that engineering in their brain, that engineer that you are will go, well, no, I can't do that. Or I will take this or I don't have that or, you know, so it helps it to go back to that and go, okay, I do remember now, yep. but look at what has happened, mm -hmm. you know, hundreds of units later, whole different lifestyle than we could have imagined in a mm -hmm. much shorter time. Um, but yeah, that, that's where it all started. And then we've done all the other things since, you know, I used to, when we started in that, I thought people flipping houses were insane. Like yeah. we were just going to do the multifamily. So eventually we did, they'll go through our chapters of flipping. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> like, yeah. like most yeah. people as do. As soon as people, but um, as soon as I got in, I was like, I got to get out of this. Yeah. Like, right. So that's But, the but I wasn't a good flipper. There's some people that's, who are really yeah, good flippers. Yeah. I wasn't that person and right. I didn't, I guess I, I have like a sense of efficiency and it's very yeah. hard to be an efficient custom home flip, you right. know, because everything's different. You can't yeah. standardize. I mean, some, you know, to some level you can standardize some of the finishes and stuff, yeah. but it's yeah. just, there's a lot of work that goes into that. But that's like why apartments really resonated with yeah. me. Cause I could go in, slap in the same color walls, floors, you know, cabinets, countertops, yeah. make it all clean, safe, functional, cosmetically updated. And it's like, boom. And you kind of rinse along. and repeat. Yeah. 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 And I loved, I loved the creativity of flipping and we did it for a while and I really did enjoy the pops of cash it brought, which then for you sure. go into multifamily sure. stuff, but also like it's a distraction if you're not careful. So, right. but we did that. We did like the brokerage, which I just sold. Um, so yay. Did you? That's Congrats. Done. How yeah. long did you have that for? Uh, about seven, six, seven years. Mm -hmm. And I was a broker before that. Cause when we started, I had thought, oh, it'd be a great idea to be a broker and do property management. <laughs> Like two minutes into that, I'm like, oh no, it, we're never gonna do this. Isn't it uh -uh. funny how I remember when I when I you know we got in, into real estate and I was like, I want everything under one roof, mm -hmm. right? You want the brokerage, mm -hmm. you want the management, you well, want you construction, see the, the revenue from all of it, you want yeah. investing. Mm -hmm. Like I'm doing all of it anyways, might as, but like people don't realize they're all different businesses. Completely. Yeah. Every single one's different. So you need a mm -hmm. COO for every single one of those. You yeah. need a operations team, you need salespeople mm -hmm. for each one. You need like and you don't realize that, I think, first growing. And then yeah. I think maybe, you know, maybe you get to a point and you start bringing in maybe the brokerage or something or you manage some stuff in house once you hit a certain level of efficiencies. But the reality is we're here talking about like lifestyle design yes. mostly and, yeah. and more businesses isn't always better. I would much rather see people invest in one business and just go deep and keep on reinvesting in that one business because yeah. that's going to create a better return than owning and giving partial effort to multiple businesses, yeah. you know? So that's good. Absolutely. Did you, did you sell or finance it? For sell, the, oh yeah. The yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah. I mean, that's pretty just typical. Just be payments. I could step out. The liability is gone. The worrying about a team, all that stuff. Create a just note. Paid out for the rest of the yep. year. And it, and it gives him a great opportunity to move ahead and have his own thing. It's amazing. That he didn't, see before mm -hmm. um so that's great but i also knew that as good as it was it wasn't our best thing right mm -hmm. like that's a big thing i go on is my best yes and, mm -hmm. and there's so many yeses and you know this like yep. people approach you probably every day too many opportunities and that there are a lot of great opportunities but you can't do them all or at least not well there's only one best opportunity yes, right the best, best yes yes yeah and 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 that's a real hindrance is a real bottleneck as you start to have success. There's mm -hmm. so many different things, so many shiny objects, so many opportunities that people, and it's like, it's, it's kind of cool when you don't come from that, right? Like mm -hmm. I never had all these people wanting to do business with me. Yeah. So it was almost like endearing that they wanted to do business mm -hmm. with me 
And so I wanted to say yes because it was like cool to have those types of opportunities. And then as soon as I said yes to a handful, I was like, oh no, mm -hmm. right? Now my time, my attention, my resources are spread way too thin. Yep. And that, that was a big difference in, that I realized in, in successful people versus very successful people. Very successful people said no to almost everything, mm -hmm. right? And the successful people chased the objects and they tried to do Forex trading while they were investing in real estate and buying yeah. e-commerce stores <laughs> and, you know, throwing money at crypto yeah. and all those different kinds of things. And the reality is that those also are all different businesses. If you're not all in on all of them, then, um, and obviously you can't be, then they're not all going to be successful. Yeah. I always kind of giggle when like, especially students will come to me and I'm in real estate. Like, what does that mean? Because yeah, yeah, yeah. there De are different, this. like, yeah. you're not in real estate, yeah. either you buy multifamily properties. Like for mm -hmm. us, it's really, really drilled down now more than ever. And it's like, we buy primarily two bed, one bath multifamily properties. They're, you know, 16 to 24 units and bigger. Mm -hmm. They're in Wisconsin, Iowa, and Illinois in mm -hmm. the areas that we have really, really exceptional management. And like, that's it. That's like that's it. really the focus. Unless something falls in our lap, that's incredible, which we've had a little bit here and there. Otherwise it's like, no, but, it has but to be a slam dunk if it's outside of that at that, all. That is so critical and I don't want anybody to kind of like pass up on that. The reason you are having more success is because you're that defined on what your focus is. Mm -hmm. And you can easily see it if a new opportunity fits in that box mm -hmm. or if it doesn't. And if it doesn't, it's very easy to say no because this is the only thing that I buy. Right. You know? And that's that's been everything and I give Josh so much credit. We have our, our criteria drilled in very, very tight. And, and so we're able to look at a deal and more quickly go, oh yeah, we should pursue and look at that more or mm -hmm. no, heck no, that's not even close. Mm -hmm. And also it helps protect you. And I know we're talking a lot of real estate here, but, but this is our, a lot of our audience. It protects you from that ego driven investing, For which is sure. what I see people crush themselves with. But I'm, I'm like, we've all uh, done yeah, it where you're my, like, yeah. Oh, it's more. So it's better. Right? No. Which and I've seen people, case. I've seen people sink their whole ship because they did one bad deal. Yep because it was gonna look really great yep. or because it made them feel like they were better yep. and it's sad to watch. And yep. so anyway, that's what I get passionate about now is helping people like avoid that. <laughs> yep. No, and, and it's, and you think you're passing up on opportunity by saying no to those things. Mm -hmm. And the reality is, no, it gets the noise out of the way Yes. and it creates more runway and, and a faster, uh, faster to sort past that and yeah. find the next deal that does fit into your buy box. Right. It's not like that, like you have to do deals outside of your focus in order to keep on growing. You need to get rid of the noise and sort faster through all that noise and those other deals that mm -hmm. do fit in your focus are out there. You're just not seeing them because you're focused, on, you're, you're paying you're attention doing to this busy nonsense work. over here. That's not right. paying you. Yeah. But those other, it'll just create more opportunity if you say no, Yeah. as weird as that sounds, because you'll find more deals and you'll sort faster to find better deals right. that do fit your focus. And you find what you focus on, right? Like that's right. with anything, mm -hmm. your health and your spirituality, all of it. Like what you're focusing yep. on, what you're looking for is what you're going to find. Yep. So and and expand on that. And, and yeah. so what I'd like to do is let's talk about specifically the, the, the part of your presentation in Puerto Rico was that everybody's talking about was like the calendar yes. portion. Yeah. And that calendar that you put up and said, hey, you know, most people look at a calendar and they say, oh, well, what's a normal work week look like? It looks like a nine to five, because mm -hmm. that's what everybody else does. And so I'm an entrepreneur and I should work from nine to five. Yeah. And five days or a week. Or seven to 10. Or seven to, yeah. <laughs> yeah. You know who you are. Yeah. And so, and so that, and, and then outside of that nine to five, that's blocked out for work. Then they say, oh, and then I get the kids games on Saturdays and I got church on Sunday and I have a family dinner, you know, a few nights a week. And, and if I can fit it in, maybe a right. date night, you know, like, and then maybe there's, there's, uh, there's not really any time for me, right? There's yeah. not well, really time work to work out, out right? There's not really, busy. Yeah. yeah. And so you take, you've taken that and completely flipped it upside mm -hmm. down. So tell me, uh, and let's explain, yeah. how do you guys create your calendar and your schedule and sure. um, let's give some technical elements of that so that way people can take mm -hmm. it back and really implement some of that stuff on their own. Yeah, absolutely. So my 
my really big passion right now is doing the coaching, leadership boardroom stuff that we're doing. And this mm -hmm. is a big element in it that we use to help our students change perspective. The ones that are buried in business and work and they're fitting life in around that. Yep. So we, like you said, we flip it on its head. And, and essentially what, what you do is take, and you can do this, anybody can do this, but take a very basic calendar, you know, of a normal week and go ahead and fill. So th there's some pre-work to this, but um, fill in to that calendar the things that you're most passionate about, the things that, you know, you talk about um, family and kids and, and health and working out and, and church and, um, you know, maybe it's some traveling or day trips or whatever. Like some of the pre-work is to de determine what those things are that really say, excite like, you. Like so we how, want to back up a sec. Yeah. Right. Those how vision do we figure elements. Out, you got to have the self-awareness to right. understand what actually matters yes. to you. Yeah. And so that's kind of step one. So let's back up a second here. And a lot of people haven't even like <laughs> sat down and mm -mm. here, here's what I like to do. Right. right. Like, as an entrepreneur, you're running for years and years and years. You're like, I don't even know what my hobbies are anymore. And we see that a lot, mm -hmm. which is really sad, but we see people who have been doing it so long that they've really lost touch with what they even are excited about. Right. Or I also see a lot of people that will tell me, you know, I value my faith and my family and my health, but if you show me your calendar and your bank account, I'll tell you what you value. Mm -hmm. And it, a lot of times that doesn't line up. And, I, and it can be brutal, but you got to see it. The greatest indicator of your priorities is how you spend your time. Mm -hmm. my, my family's number one. Okay, then why are you working 14 hours a day yeah. and you see your family for two? Mm -hmm. That tells me that you value work seven times more mm -hmm. than you value your family. Right. Like that's a punch in the gut, you know? Yeah. And unless, again, you take a step back and you create the awareness around that, um, then you understand that time dictates mm -hmm. your priorities. Yes. And so now that once you understand what your priorities are, once you understand what really matters to you, yeah. then that next step is figuring out how do we dedicate more time to it, right? Yes. Yep. So figure out those and we use there's about 10 categories that we help students with and it really is the big stuff, family and faith and health. Um, there's nothing business related in that first chunk of of work that you're going to do. It's all the personal stuff. Mm -hmm. And then you take that calendar and you look at, okay, what, how much time is it going to take to be a great parent? Like, what does it actually look like to you? You know, for, for me with our kids, we love doing tuck in time, you know, or picking them up from school, dropping them off at school. We love that connection to be a part of their day, to understand what's really going on, to end the day with hearing about how it went for them and mm -hmm. the good and the bad. And so, you know, you look at that and you go, okay, plug that into the calendar. And you do that with every category, you know, um, exercise. That's a non-negotiable for me. And I look at, okay, I love doing yoga and sculpt classes and stuff. Okay, what does it look like to do four or five of those a week? Mm -hmm. That feels amazing. Plug it into the calendar. And you keep going through all of the categories like that. And eventually you will have everything put in that calendar. And then you can actually look at, okay, how many hours are left? Right. If I'm putting all that in first, what's left? And that's where you fill in your business. So. So if you sat down with me, you'd say, hey, Tim, let's figure out what all your priorities are. Mm -hmm. and what, let's figure out ways to quantify being a good dad. Right. Let's figure out ways to quantify being a good spouse. And the ways that we quantify that is how much time are you spending mm -hmm. on those things. And so if, like, I, I take the kid, well, I take Penelope to school five days a week. I take Hudson to school two to three days a week. Um, and then I, I try to pick up Penelope at least two days a week. Yeah. Um, and so that, that falls in there. And then another yeah. thing that I've, I've integrated is date nights. Yep. You know, Huge. making sure there's a date night blocked out in the calendar. And so, um, you know, why do, we, why do we block out in the calendar for a meeting or an appointment or yeah. a podcast or, mm -hmm. a, a, but we're not willing to block out a date night for our mm -hmm. spouse or a date night with our kids, you yeah. know, in order to go and spend some one-on-one -on -one time with them. And um, it was a really, like, like, real tough experience that I realized that because, you know, I was, I was neglecting my daughter and playing with my daughter because I was texting on my phone one day. Mm -hmm. And the next day I was like, I, oh my gosh, I just like pushed her away so to send a non-urgent, non-important text message. Yes. And, and so the next day I, I cleared my calendar. And I was like, I need to be a good dad tomorrow. So like, let me clear my calendar. And that process created the awareness of, Oh my gosh, I time block for work, but I don't mm -hmm. time block for my family. And so then I started time blocking Fridays to just go 
do Friday Family Fun Day, is what yeah, we call it. And the I kids would pick out something fun, and, and I wouldn't take any calls, I wouldn't take any podcasts, I wouldn't you know, meet for lunch, I wouldn't um, grab coffee. Like, it was mm -hmm. all about doing something with the fam. Yep. And again, that quality time now quantifies how, how you're uh, pursuing and, and increasing the value of that thing that matters, yep. right? And so, when you, if, if you would look at my calendar, then you would tell me, hey, Tim, if, you, if it, you know, working out and exercise or meditation is important, mm -hmm. like what time do you wake up? Let's block out two hours in the morning right. for those things, getting cleaned up, an hour for taking the kids to school and getting them ready, and then, uh, oh, in the evenings, let's, let's block out the date nights for you and Kate, and let's block out a date night for uh, this, or maybe you go and speak at the local Rita event or something, and that's sure. okay too, and you can put that in there. And, um, but, but then you find out and you realize that a lot of the time has been uh, taken up and a lot of the time on the calendar has been yep. taken up right? Yeah. by yeah. the things that actually matter, which is right. amazing. Yeah. And then it allows us to fill in mm -hmm. the gaps with the work stuff. And the beautiful part of that is not only that you're actually then prioritizing the things that, that you say are important and are important, you know, in, in making them top priority, but then you're also using your time so much more efficiently. Mm -hmm. Too many, especially entrepreneurs, when you don't have the times blocked, you're just doing anything and everything. Like you're busy, mm -hmm. just for the sake of being busy. Right. And it's wasteful because you're not using, you're not doing your highest and best use of your time, which right. is what you should understand as an entrepreneur, right? Like what are the, there's an exercise you can do that figures out your dollar per hour that you should be. Mm -hmm. I don't know if you've ever done that, mm -hmm. but it's super interesting. Yep. Most people are making way less per hour than yep. what they should be yep. because they're doing menial tasks. Not doing unimportant $10 things, but yes, which you shouldn't be doing. And so by forcing this, like for Josh and I, we, we kind of joke, but we're like, we have five-ish hours a day max that, that can be work. And mm -hmm. a lot of times it's even less than that, depending on what's going on. Yep. But in that time, we can, ma we can max out those hours and do a week's worth of work sometimes in five or six hours because we focused know focused on the what, revenue generating yes, activities. Yes. And like you talked about before, we also know our criteria for what we do. So we can weed through a lot of stuff a lot quicker mm. and we can do only the most important things that will result in the best return yep. for what we're doing. Yep. Highest return and on so time. So it's just being aware of that. So, so give, like, let's explain that exercise. Yes. So how have you done that exercise in order to figure out the highest return on your time? The, you mean like the dollar per hour yeah, thing per or, hour. yeah, so you can, it's pretty simple, but you can take, let's see how we do it now. It's really like the amount of money you want to make in a year and then the amount of hours you have left on your calendar after you've done all of that personal stuff. Mm -hmm. You basically just divide it out to figure out what your dollar per hour is in a very simple way. Now, again, don't just set some number for what you want to make in a year. That's a whole nother piece of this that right. I go into and we right. work with students a lot on this because a lot of people will just pull a number out of their backside because yeah. it sounds I want to make a million dollars a year. Everybody, like why? Everybody says that and I'm just like, what is that, what is that gonna do for you? Because I, here's I the thing. That, I was sitting down with Caleb uh, yeah. Pearson, who's yeah. part of Leadership Road Room and part yes. of Legacy Family. Yeah. And um, he's never been anywhere in the masterminds, but he's part of Legacy <laughs> Family too. Okay. So he's, he's coming to I'm Chicago. Not, okay. He's coming to oh, Chicago. Oh cool, good. Yeah. Uh, one of my dearest friends here in town. And um, I don't know, we were, we were having some cocktails he just moved into a new home and we were talking about I was like dude how much longer are you gonna have to work because you gotta pay this house off right, right? And we're just messing with each other uh, but he owns several hundred apartments and this and that and we were just talking conceptually of like if the houses were paid off and if the cars are paid off and like most of that stuff and you're, you're not living a lavish like how much money do you actually need to mm -hmm. live off of mm -hmm. right like you can have a pretty amazing life on not that much money like and, yep. and these are people who are used to making million dollars plus, mm -hmm. and you're and and you know they're saying, hey, I need I need one hundred twenty thousand dollars a year if my mm -hmm. stuff's paid off, or I need, you know, really eighty thousand dollars a year, and I'm in pretty good shape, and I can cover the taxes and the insurance and go out to eat, and but yeah. and like it's not as much money as you might think, uh, you know, somebody like that would would say, and yeah. so. To pull a 1.5 million dollars a year out of your ass, like what's why? Mm -hmm. What's wh like? We ask them why. Well, uh, I don't know because it sounds like a good round number. Like, if you go why multiple levels, oh like, yeah, why, we why? do. <laughs> yeah, mm -hmm. and then people are like, why I don't do know. It. Probably my ego. You know? Uh huh. 
That's well, 99.999% yeah. of the time, there's something in us that's getting fulfilled by that. It's yeah. not the number. It's not the money. It's what it makes you feel. Yeah. It's what it what you're buying with it that also makes you feel a certain something or like you're a certain someone. And there's that whole piece of this that we work with people on because, mm -hmm. because yes, you're right. It usually is that. And what's crazy is when you really dig deep and we work with someone long enough and you see what they actually love and is important to them and what they want to do, most of the time it's significantly less money mm -hmm. that they need to actually live. And yep. what they're seeking is actually freedom yep. over that money because a lot of people pull this number and what they don't associate it with it, they, they associate the things and the prestige and the ego piece with it, but what they don't associate with it is everything else they're gonna have to sacrifice to earn that. Mm -hmm. Because even it's easy to even just throw out a million a bucks point. a year. That's not easy to do necessarily, right. especially if you're an entrepreneur and you're starting something on your own, whatever. Like that's gonna take some commitment yep. and some time. And so you have and to look sacrifice, at, right? yes, what are you sacrificing? What are you giving? And, and I'm not saying that that's wrong, but you have to know your own version of what that should look like. Mm -hmm. And are you giving up all these other things you already have right in front of you? Because you think you need to go out and do that? Yep. Million or two million or 10 million? I don't care what the number is. Like that's why we, we work with people and whenever they come to me and say, hey, I've got my number, I need to make, $25,000 a month. I'm like, eh, BS. You didn't even break down your numbers because yeah, yeah. it's a perfectly round little number or yeah, you need yeah, a million yeah, a year. Yeah, yeah. Like that's BS. You didn't actually do the work to go, yeah. okay, I love whatever boating and here's the kind of boat I want, or I love this neighborhood and I want a house here. I love mm -hmm. whatever, or I just want to have freedom to travel, you know, six months out of the year. Yep. You can break that down and have your numbers pretty darn dialed in yep. and then know, okay, maybe I don't need to buy that boat, but maybe I can rent it and it's a trip I do twice a year and I get to bring all my friends and that's fulfilled something in me that I wanted but now I don't have to maintain it yeah. or store it or pay someone to do all the stuff with it. Now you know it's what not $800,000, like, now yes. it's like 15 grand. And you have it now instead yeah. of, and I'm not saying those things are bad, maybe it is what you really want, that's amazing, but let's make sure the reality before is, you sacrifice yeah, The reality is there's way smarter financial decisions in order yes. to have that, especially in this day of age of the Ubers, right? Yeah. And, and uh, the Airbnbs, like you can, mm -hmm. you can go and rent a ridiculous house. Yes. And guess what? Not have to go vacation to the same place and feel obligated to go to the yes. same spot every single year, same time of the mm -hmm. year. Like, that's cool for some people, and some right. other people might want to experience different locations, yeah. right? And so, yeah, I think that's that again comes back to awareness, comes back to figuring out what you really want and what's mm -hmm. really important to you, and realizing that. Um, you might not need as much money to live off of as you may think. And then you can figure out how you're going to spend the highest, best use of your time in order yep. to buy enough assets to then pay for that lifestyle. Right. And what's so cool about that is once you get that dialed in and, and okay, I only need 200 grand to live this actually magnificent free life I want. Mm -hmm. And then you're actually loving your work. Just wait and see what happens. Cause right. when you love what you do and it's fun, you will blow it up in a like a whole nother way, and, you and that's show when up it better. does roll in all that extra money you don't even need. Right. It just shows up, right. and then you can give more and do more. You show up better in all the other capacities yes. of your life, and, yes. and that that uh, happiness just just you know it, it vibrates at a higher frequency, and then people want to do more business with you because yeah. you're happier and you're not talking negative. You're not worried about the economy. And you're not. You're not and stressed so that and losing sleep every night because right. you got yourself trapped. And You're then it attracts other people do. of like, Audrey, how are you doing this? How can I be part of it? Yes. How can I, you know, do business with you? How can I pay you to coach me? How can I, like, right. that just ends up coming into fruition because yeah. you're living the, the authenticity life that of that. What you can discover in doing this vision work is more powerful than anything I can yep. even share. Other like, like dig into that. I love it. I, just, I love just it. Just do that and know what your vision is, what that needs to look like, and then build the business that will support it. I love it. So powerful. Yeah. I'm excited to check out the master class. I'm yeah. excited. Um, again, people are still talking about the I the love the stories. Oh my gosh, I was like yeah, in yeah. tears hearing these stories that yeah. people have shared with me. It's really, really incredible. And thank you guys for yeah, that. Yeah, I'm excited. So thank you for being yeah. on Spill the Beans. Yeah. Excited to check out the master thank class you. after you uh, after you record we'll it today. Done. Yeah. Yep. And yeah, then uh, good stuff. I will see you in Chicago. Mm -hmm. Awesome. We'll be there. And I hope you guys got some great takeaways from that. Hopefully you took some notes and and I challenge you to actually go out and do that exercise. Actually sit down, put your calendar together and put time in for you, right? Like like create time for your health, for your personal mental fitness and your personal mental wellness, 
for your family, for your friends, for a date night with your spouse, for a, a date night with your kids or just family time together. And then see what's left in your calendar and fill in those gaps with your business economic type efforts and actions. And it's gonna teach you to be way more organized, way more efficient, and way more productive in the hours of the day that you have. So I, I challenge you to go out and do that. I'd love to hear your feedback. Put it in the comments below. Give me your other takeaways. And if you know somebody else who really needs to hear this or would really appreciate this content, please share it with them. That's why we do what we do is so that way we can uh, better entrepreneurs and, and create a better lifestyle and, and allow you to give more, be more, do more, have more, and do all those amazing things that I know that you're capable of. So appreciate you being here. See you on the next episode of Spilling the Beans. I'll see ya.